Admiral's log. The German threat looms large on the horizon, casting a shadow of uncertainty over our naval operations. Their massive navy, a formidable force to be reckoned with, presents a challenge unlike any we have faced before. Yet in the face of this daunting adversary, we have adopted a strategy akin to eating an elephant, one bite at a time. As the Germans continue to harass our merchant shipping, we have refrained from engaging them head on, recognizing that such a direct approach would only lead to further casualties on our part. Instead, we have adopted a more calculated and strategic approach, focusing on wearing down their forces bit by bit. Each encounter with the German fleet is carefully orchestrated, with our escorting ships fending off the attackers and sinking them one by one. With each victory, the Germans find themselves with fewer and fewer ships at their disposal, their once mighty navy gradually dwindling in size and strength. It is a battle of attrition, to be sure, but one that we are determined to win. Through patience, perseverance and strategic cunning, we will chip away at the German fleet until they are no longer a threat to our merchant shipping and naval operations. Today's video is kindly sponsored by the Block Zone. The Block Zone gives you a ton of things to do when you're not gaming, in the form of these big projects. Now they have a ton of different projects for you, both in the form of cars. Um, I recently came across the various tanks that you have. I've already shown, for example, I think the Tiger tank before. You got the T-34, you have the M-47 Patton, you even have the Ferdinand in there, and this one's RC. Um, I quite like the Fletcher. This is one of their newer arrivals. 2,315 pieces to put together, so that ought to keep you busy for a while. I uh, wouldn't try to play with it in the bath because some parts might come off though. And what I also found recently was this uh, cute all-terrain military tank. Um, <laughs> more like a buggy than a tank, but I think it looks cute. Now the Block Zone has these projects. They do tend to run a little expensive. So what you can do is add one of these to cart and then go to complete order and use my code STEALTH upon a discount. Because if you add STEALTH, you're getting 10% off. So this really helps. You can also click the link down below in the description and get to building from the block zone. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back. It's episode 31 and we have some German battleships to deal with. Not right now, though. That gives me some time. So we're going to have another look at one of the definitely most useful ships so far, the Enigma Huns. What's wrong with these things? Well, they got that big 18-inch gun right on the middle of the ship and so far I am extremely unimpressed with its performance. It's been extremely random. The 13-inch guns on the bow and the stern are very, very steady damage dealers. You know that they'll deliver. The 18-inch gun might sort of reclaim its glory if it encounters a battleship. It's a relatively easier target to deal with. And as such, maybe this gun can actually hit something. Now, the upgrade that the ship is going to be getting is the Mark IV, which does give it a slightly better reload, it gives it better accuracy, it gives it better pen. But I'm still not entirely convinced that this is the right way to go. So what's the alternative? 15-inch guns, 16-inch guns, 17-inch guns. These are all Mark IV. Um, you're looking probably at the quad stats here, yeah. If I'm going dual barrel with these things, it's 56 seconds versus 63 seconds. So a 17-inch gun doesn't actually do that much for me. I am, however, firing semi-ballistic shells. I kind of don't want to get rid of those because they are very good shells, especially if you fire them from a 13-inch gun at a cruiser. This is going to completely wreck the cruiser. It does completely... no, not a whole lot of damage. <laughs> like, it's not completely harmless when fired at a battleship, but it's not exactly what you would want. Now I'm considering just upgrading the whole ship to have three 15-inchers. I'm not sure if that will fit. So let's have a look. So we're going to have one 15 there, one 15 there, and one 15... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not quite going to fit. Uh, we're only 4,000 tons overweight. If I go to a lighter armor scheme, maybe I can make it work, but... Feels very unsafe. If I go diesels, or diesel 2 even, this thing goes to 797 million. Which puts it almost on par with the state belt. So that's not going to happen. As for 
other options. Um, 13 inch quadruples. I guess that could work. And then... Actually, what about 14 inch quadruples? The problem is you're kind of wasting this whole deck space here. Is it possible to relocate the superstructure there? Oh, they won't let you do that. I can put the superstructure slightly farther back. So that could work. And then have one of the turrets over there. And have another one of the turrets on the back. This way, especially with the high-end capitalistic twos, I can probably hurt that battleship pretty bad. Oh, these are quad 13s. I meant to go like quad 14s. Now, of course, that battleship that the Germans have is not the only threat that this thing is going to be facing. So I will stick to the casemates. The refit time, however, five months for really a marginal upgrade in firepower. Well, it might not be that marginal. They had four 13-inch barrels plus two 18-inchers. Now they have eight barrels. So we're, we're increasing barrel count at the expense of, let's say, hard damage with the 18-incher. But, well, seeing how lacluster the 18-inch performance has been, maybe this is the better option to go. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just undo all the changes, kick off the 18-inch gun, and do it all over again, because I think five months is a bit much for refitting. A little while later, I've come up with this design. It's very different. We have a double barrel 16 on the back, we have a triple barrel 16 on the bow, and we have a couple of quadruple sixers amidships. This is because I found that these 3.9s, they work, but their field of fire is so limited that they tend to really need a lot of broadside. This leaves the bow of the ship covered by the 8-inch guns, the stern of the ship covered by the 6-inch gun, as well as that big 15, and it still gives me um, a slight upgrade. We get 24 knots, we get the modern armor, and we get the radar rangefinder. I hope that these guns with uh, capped AP shells are going to be sufficient to deal with some of these German ships. But considering their pen, let's say 15,000 meter range, 24 inches of pen, I think we can make a pretty good dent in them. The problem is, it's going to make a pretty good dent in the availability of the Enigma Hunts because they'll be out of action for six months. I can probably refit one at a time, just to make sure that I don't have all my ships out for maintenance, slash refitting. And, uh, well, I'm eager to see your thoughts down below in the comments about this new design, slash this refit. Because I think it's an interesting ship, like it's an interesting design. Whether it'll work, I don't know. Let me know down below. Now, onto a new design, uh, sorry, onto a new design of a new battlecruiser. The reason for this new battlecruiser is that I want to have the capacity of having something move a couple of really big guns really quickly. So I'm thinking a modern battlecruiser, so a fast battleship as the game considers it, displacing about 45,000 tons, so relatively minimal tonnage, and that should also push the price to a relatively respectable number. The ship is going to be quick. She's going to be doing 33 knots, maybe even 35 because this also allows me potentially quite a high maneuverability on the world map. So that I can get this thing into position where those big battleships are going to be. This is going to mean something that is efficient. Um, engine efficiency differs, or rather cruising speed. So we got 75% of top speed to achieve cruising speed. This means that 75% of that 35 knots is going to turn into cruising speed. With gear turbines, you're getting 60%. With turbo electric, you're getting 72.5%. But there is another factor at play here. I want to make sure that this thing has engines that give the ship quite a bit of maneuverability. And I think this is better than diesels. Diesels have 48 horsepower per ton. Turbo electrics have actually quite a lot more. And might be a better option. Now, there is something I want to check before I complete this design which is whether or not those gas turbines are coming out anytime soon. Sadly, the answer is no. The gas turbines, even if I'm boosting this, are going to take me another year. Considering that the German threat is here now, I cannot wait another year. We're going to have to continue with the designs using either the turboelectric drives or the high-end diesels. So we're back to our engine choice. Diesels make this ship very expensive. Three billion. 
the flip side is that the displacement is okay and these things actually don't damage that easily like their ability to be repaired is very good the problem is once this thing starts losing speed and you want to speed back up their acceleration is relatively low minus 27 and a half this thing has better stats your engine vibration is minus 60 percent this one has engine vibration of uh, none gives no engine vibration change 75 percent of cruise speed this is 72 like the ship is slightly heavier, but it's also cheaper. I mean, it's still freaking expensive at a billion. But okay, I'm willing to accept that price tag. Torpedo blister, um, yeah, that might be a bit of a problem. Let's go with a single hull bottom. Citadel 5, anti-flood 3, and let's put on the main tower first. I'm thinking ABX... But seeing as I'm well, seeing as I'm trying to shuffle around a couple of 18-inch guns, I'm not so sure if that'll fit on this ship. Because I'm trying to basically build a mini Yamato. Just the Chinese version of it. Uh, yeah, you also need a secondary tower, don't you? I can get the advanced. This is long-range accuracy 12, 11 and a half, uh, 5, or 5. The good news is this thing takes up a metric ton of space. The tall secondary tower does not take up a lot of space and can be useful because this can shrink down the well the whole ship a little bit. What am I paying for that? Long range accuracy only 5 versus 12. You're getting night vision on this ship. You're getting aiming speed which is better. Base accuracy. This thing has no base accuracy? Oh, that's bad news. Sorry, you're gone. I do need my base accuracy, especially as I'm using 18-inch guns. I need my base accuracy. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> Engine efficiency is going to need work. We still need barbette armor. Uh, this ship is probably not going to work the way that I have it intended. But then again, I'm trying to move a couple of... <laughs> a couple of 18-inch guns around on a relatively small platform. I mean, the Yamato displaced about 70,000 tons. And this is not even all the gadgets and gizmos that I would want on this ship. Um, stereoscopic, RDF. What sort of pen do we get? Oh, well, that's actually not bad. 16-inch pen at 20 kilometers. Yeah, I can live with that. Now, here's the challenge. If you want to make a ship like this, you want to try and minimize the beam. And I'll probably have to upgrade the displacement a bit. So let's say 48,000 tons. Nope. The challenge is finding that number where the game goes, yeah, I can actually make this work. We're getting there. Sort of. Oh, but I still don't have a funnel. And that's also a couple thousand tons. I think there's going to be like a $2 billion ship. Go to 60,000 tons. There. Now it'll fit. Sort of. Oh, sorry. No, I do have a funnel. It's just terrible engine efficiency. Go with a second funnel. Oh, God. I still don't have any secondary guns. I can see that becoming a problem. And I don't know about my armor. <laughs> Get hit on this thing and you're dead. You're just dead. That's a problem. So this would be a glass cannon flinging through the water at 35 knots. If I slow her down quite a bit, I can regain a couple thousand tons. Um, give it better steering for one. An unbalanced rudder. Give it standard and capitalistic HE. These things shoot... Yeah, they got sort of okay turning rotation. Yeah. What if I turn it into one of those Graf Spee-ish designs? But let's say the Graf Spee-ish um, evil step to win with 18-inch guns as opposed to 11s. That could free up about, about 5,000 tons, considering the barbette, the turret, and its armor. And with that, I can probably have it over... Well, let's, sort of, let's say be overwatched, <laughs> for lack of a better term, by a secondary... Um, I'm going to put these guns on on reverse 
for at least testing purposes. Because I want to have these as 360 degree turrets. So they'll be, they'll be able to snap to their target. Well, they won't snap. They'll be able to turn to their targets relatively quickly. And these are the Mark IV. So they are a better variant than the ones that I've just been showing you. So you're going to sit there. You're going to sit there. And that's going to be a secondary 8-inch Mark V. Let's say triple barrel gun. If I push this forward, this thing is also going to be able to spin 360 degrees. So I need to find that sweet spot for this gun as well. Yep, there we are. Okay, now I can put these guns on normally. Yep. Works. For weight offset is only 0.1%. That's excellent. Nope, not there. Perfect. Okay. Um, making these things standard should also give the 8-inchers a bit more punch for their power. And with that, be able to start penning cruisers. Not spectacularly so, but still potentially enough. The alternative is to go with a secondary, well, a secondary primary gun, insofar as that makes sense. But the problem is weight. Let's say I want to have an 11-inch gun overwatching this. This is 500 ton. The 11-inch gun is about twice as heavy. It won't even fit. No, I'm going to stick to my guns. Sorry. And put this here. And uh, that allows me to put on some additional armor. 15-inch there. Give me a solid main deck. Give me a superstructure of 3 inches. Five there, five there. Give me seven and seven. And especially with 190% armor quality, that ought to be sufficient. TNT and triple base gives me a bit more pen. And then I could go light shells, I guess, because it gives you less ricochet angle or less ricochet chance. So with the standard or something, maybe I can get away with this. At 15 inches, sorry, at 15 kilometers. I can pen 21 inches of armor if my slider is set correct. Let's say the Germans have about 175. Something to that effect. I can pen 16 inches of armor, which means I can go right through a belt. A bow, a stern, maybe the main belt. Maybe. Reload, 72 seconds. Turret rotation speed is still not great, but considering it can turn 360 degrees over the ship as well, that should allow it quite a bit of versatility. This gun turns far faster at 6 degrees per second and will be able to engage cruisers, well, anywhere. As for the rest of the secondaries, I unfortunately cannot put those guns up there, but I might be able to house a couple of 5-inch. Now, I personally despise the look of the quads, and they won't fit side by side anyway, so let's go with triples, which also won't fit side by side anyway. What good are you? What good are you? Can I go like a 6 and a 4? Oh, never mind. The 5 and the 4 then. So a 5 inch there and a 4... Nope. Ugh. Fine. Oh, and they can't even turn fully. I was hoping that they would also cover the back of the ship, but unfortunately they can't do that. Okay, be like that. Can we do anything with these? Yes. We're going to put 5 inch there, 5 inch there. This gives me quite a bit of firepower when it comes to dealing with smaller threats. Why are you set up in reverse? One there. One there. And again, these are the Mark V. They're very good. they got a very good reload. They're very capable guns. Accurate. I like them. I can make them, considering that this is a bit of a standoffish warship, even better. By giving 20% longer barrels. Sacrifice some reload. You got a 12 second reload to pump out these three shells. But it gives me a maximum range of about... I'm, I'm going to disregard the HE range and AP range. We're going to say 14. Let's say 10 to 14 is where these things are going to start to deal damage. And especially against the destroyer, that's good news. Because that means that the destroyer is going to be dissuaded to try closing into range. If it... well, if it isn't in range yet. As for a propeller shaft, um, I can make this thing accelerate even faster. And let's get an auxiliary engine. Ooh, I got nine tons left. 
the conning tower isn't exactly armored yet. I'm going to have to take some armor from the deck and put that on the conning tower. Because if we lose the conning tower, the whole ship becomes kind of useless. So let's put that on 13, 12. Come on. You'll fit. There. Exactly balanced. 60,000 for 60,000. The ship's going to cost me $1.6 billion. And this is the 38 Tails. I believe we've already had a ship of this name, but I think it got sunk long ago. So, let's see. 18-inch guns, firing every 72 seconds. 8-inch guns, overwatching them, firing every 14 seconds, giving me a bit of punch against cruisers. 5-inch guns, dealing with destroyers, but real the main weapon system for this is the 18-inch 52. Capable of dealing damage potentially out to 50 kilometers. What's the maximum range on these if you put long barrels on them? That does not change. 59? You're going from 55 to 59. Okay. So at 40 kilometers, I have 0.6 to 1.2. And now I have 0.6 to 1.2. Lovely. Uh, what about 10 kilometers? 14 to 16. 10 kilometers, 12 to 14. So I'm gaining pretty much nothing. Okay, fine. I'll keep the ship as is. The 38 tails. Now the question is, can I actually build one of these? Because my shipyards just spit out a couple of cursed fish, but they're not that big of a ship. I think they were displacing something in the 30,000 tons. Maybe in that range. But, well, they did spit out two of them, so maybe I can make one of these new battle cruisers. And as my ships have been taking damage over the last couple of months, this is what I was afraid of. I don't have any displacement left to either upgrade the ships that I just changed, the Enigma Huns, or build the new ones. Unfortunate. As for those new ships that I was talking about, the Cursed Fish, we got the Meiji and we got the Viskialom, ready in Kulung. I'm going to have these guys go out because there were a couple of really nice provinces up for grabs. Saipan is going to be the first stop for these ships. And with those in round, I can actually grab a colony. That's worth two billion in income. It's nuts the amount of income that this thing generates. Um, yeah, it doesn't see that I have enough tonnage here, which makes sense. I got two heavies and a bunch of DDs. It's never going to be enough. Now, what is taking up all of this um, production? It's a flight of new Mechamedic 3s. It is also going to be repairs. Yeah. The Heart Nutter repairing in one month. That's another Enigma Hunt getting back online. The Gosrith down in one month, the Aura two months, the Nyrocked, uh one month for the Enigma Hunt itself. Yeah, fine. So in one month, we should have a bunch more tonnage available. We can actually start making these changes to the ships. As for the German Navy, um, they are building 27 ships. And of course, I cannot see what they're building. And also, I mustn't completely focus on that battleship threat. Because it is not the only ship that they have. I mean, sure, they're scary, but 40 heavy cruisers, 42 lights, and 48 DDs is a lot. As for their presence here, um, 2 BBs, 3 DDs, and 6 BBs. I am not going out of ports here. Absolutely not. I don't mind the occasional 1v1. Fine. But against 6, and then in the worst case these things merge and we're looking at about eight of or sorry nine of these super battleships yeah no thank you so we're gonna deploy the classic go where the enemy isn't and invade over there once these ships get here time for the next round against the germans it's the scheffler gaming came to within an inch of its life but survived and these 16 inch guns are now going to rumble down on the nassau which is packing 10 14 inch guns as well as a couple of heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and a DD. Well, three light cruisers, in fact. Now, these heavies have 10-inch guns. Um, some have three, some have four. This is the Irene class from 1937. This is the Princess Wilhelm class. Not sure what year. Could be recent, could just be their first version. Nassau, um, not that expensive, leading me to believe that it doesn't have very high tech aboard. But it does come with torpedoes. And I don't have any escorts. So best keep this thing, uh, let's say, doing some talking with the 16-inchers from far away. The closer I get, 
the bigger the chance that they'll launch torpedoes. And, well, <laughs> I have a pretty serious chance that I'll never see those coming. Thankfully, we're starting 38 kilometers away, and I actually have range. I have range to 50 kilometers with these Mark IV guns. So that gives me a pretty decent advantage right about now. And I am very eager to capitalize on that. So I'm going to keep the ship running relatively slowly. I don't mind going to half speed to give her a more stable firing platform. Conditions are favorable for good accuracy. You got that clear weather for 50% bonus. This ship, the battle cruiser, let's see what the range is. 22 kilometers. So I have <laughs> a lot of range on them. I mean, I have an advantage of 28 kilometers on paper. In practice, I'll never actually be able to use that range, simply because at that range, you won't hit anything. Now, let's have a look at her. The Nassau. Oh, it's a Dreadnought. That's why it's not that expensive. Most firepower concentrated on the stern. Pretty good news. You're going to have to go broadside if you want to do actual uh, damage here. Let's focus on this. this is the big one. At this range... 35 kilometers. <laughs> we can actually pen a lot of armor on the deck. Because by the time that the shells get there, they will have lost a lot of their speed. Now I'm going to go with the safe option and say that the enemy still has a lot of armor. So probably more than 3.7 inches on the deck. And that means we're just going to go and make sure that this thing fires armor piercing. As for... Uh, oh, that's the other one. Yeah, that's a heavy... Yeah, it's distinctly German. It's one of those Graf Spee-esque designs. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, I have plenty of shells aboard this ship. I have a thousand armor-piercing shells ready for delivery. I just need to have a couple of willing... Or maybe not so willing... Targets. Lowering the barrels. Loading the guns. It's nice to have these state belts. They're, they've proven to be reliable ships. They're not necessarily the most survivable. And they're definitely the most expensive ships, well, that I used to have. Yeah, they're still really expensive. Three billion. Oh, we got damage in. On. The battle cruiser. Main tower penetration for 5,000 points of damage. That's actually a really good hit, because that knocked out their ability to accurately land shells. So that is... <laughs> Quite, quite the gift. Let's see if we can actually land some more through a smokescreen. I doubt it, but it's not impossible. The Scheffler has a Generation 2 radar rangefinder, and with that gains the ability to, well, not completely negate smokescreens, but it can definitely use all of that accuracy and kind of mitigate the effects from the smokescreen. Now, the ship is 24 clicks out. Yeah, we're starting to get into range here. I can try pushing a couple of shells on this target. This is their light cruiser. There's another light cruiser. Oh, sorry, this is their heavy cruiser. This is their light. This is the one that's doing a smoking. But I don't think I'll actually get anything in there. It is packing those torpedo launchers, but mostly on the stern. As such, I don't consider it that big of a threat yet. However... Sort of torp range you get. 16 clicks. Okay. So you are worthy of my attention. Oh, big hit. 8,988 points against the battle cruiser, and she's flooding. That's two hits. We've reduced this proud battle cruiser to half health. Well done, Scheffler. The light cruiser has stopped vaping, and this makes it vulnerable. 24% chance to hit it with a high very... Uh, sorry, to hit it with a heavy cruiser... No, with a high explosive shell. 15 kilometers out. I think it might be planning on launching a torp. Look at that launcher. That was an overpen. With a 16-inch shell. Okay, I'm going to assume I've been torpedoed. I don't have the ship identified yet, but I'm going to assume I have been torpedoed. So we're going to just go to flank speed for a little bit of time. Uh, these things are all on top of each other. Oh! Ah, overpen. That was another 68 damage just from an overpen. Like, that did almost nothing. That's unfortunate. 
That battle cruiser's limping away. Can't blame him, considering what I did to this thing. <laughs> Look at the damage. Holy shit. <laughs> that is... Wow. You now have a see-through main tower. I already had that, because there's a casemate in there. Well, that's good damage right there. Well done, Scheffler. More where that came from. This time against other targets, if you please. Now right, we're going to continue a full turn. And make sure that anything and everything that is planning on dropping a torpedo this way is going to get completely thrown off in their calculations about as to where that torpedo is supposed to end up. Let's target the heavy cruisers because, well, I'm turning, they're turning. This is, <laughs> relatively speaking, the easiest target. Still not by much, but it's better than nothing. Where are they going? Of course, with all this turning, my 16-inch guns are going to unfortunately be off target. Battle Cruiser still 30 clicks out. Are you guys all running? No, not strictly. Getting some damage in with uh, the 16s? Yeah. The 8-inchers are trying to help wherever they can, but... Are you landing absolutely nothing? Oh, great. Smoke screens. Um, I'm going to put the main guns... Yeah, let's put the main guns on here. Because I don't really think that, you know, these smaller ships are going to get hit by this main gun. Now, I realize I am kind of chasing these ships at flank speed. So my accuracy is going to suffer somewhat. But I need that battle cruiser dead. Not so much because it's a threat to this ship, but because it is a threat to the uh, well, to pretty much all the other ships that I can field. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers, DDs. This is not a fun ship to fight. 10 14 inch guns with good reload. I mean that is Yeah, third grade guns, so it's tier three. That's pretty dangerous. It's not really something I want to fight. Try to get rid of it. As for the DDs and their companions. Nuremberg. Unknown whether these guys have launched torpedoes, but considering no nobody's reloading, I don't think they actually did. Getting some very, very mild damage in on everybody else. I think they're kind of set to screen. Screening the battle cruiser? Sure. Now, normally the Massa would be going 29 knots, but this was water in the hull. She's only doing 18. It's good news for the state belt, because she can only do 25. So I can slow down a couple of knots and get that full speed. Which gives me, ideally, some accuracy bonus. Come on, I just need a couple good hits. Go armor piercing. I want this battle cruiser gone. Would be a very nice prize. Not terribly expensive. I mean, we've seen battleships worth 12 billion, so a 325 million dollar heavy cruiser, oh sorry, battle cruiser, it's more of a snack. But it's about the threat level that this thing generates for the rest of the fleet. Let alone convoys. Oh, overpent. So we did hit him, but not that well. How far? 21. Ah, there's another 3,000 points of damage that went right through the stern. Causing damage on their flag. Ship is flooding badly now. It has many bulkheads, but crowned crew quarters. Jeez. Ooh, buoyancy is going to be a problem. 24%. 23. Nassau is only doing 15.8 knots, which is surprising considering the amount of water that she has inside and the damaged engine. But she's powering ahead. These ships maintain a very good distance for me. Yeah, this can be a good victory over Germany. Not necessarily a ton of victory points, but that's fine. If it just reduces the amount of escort ships that they have... That means that the Scheffler Gaming is not going to, well, itself be as much at risk from torpedoes. I just need a bit of time. 
A little later, Scheffler Gaming is now very close to these cruisers, so it's time to start punishing these guys, preparing for incoming torpedo attacks, because I may have gotten slightly overzealous in my approach. Uh, we are getting some friendly damage from the Germans. Very kind of them to assist in the uh, damage dealing capability, so let's go increase the flank. So we can speed away from that incoming torpedo. Ideally, this one won't hit. Yeah, we're good. There's another one. These guys were all pretty much launching at the same time. And as such, they're... Well, they're kind of predictable. And now I'm going to slow this thing right back down. Anybody who still has torpedoes that they're planning on sending... They're going to have to try and send those with a new solution. Oh, shit. Head flank. We need to dodge two more. Uh, yeah, we're good. Oh, crap. That one was unexpected. And unwelcome. And completely unnecessary, but I got a little hungry trying to get rid of these ships. Ah, good, 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 good. That was a dud. Uh, we got a couple more coming in. Like, this is not what I need, because this is 87,000 tons of warship that wants attention in the dry dock. Damn it. Yeah, well, I get what I deserve, right? <laughs> I really had no business closing to this distance. But here we are, and there's another, and another, and another. Uh, and now she's at 60% health. This is not how you fight battles, generally. But then again, I am generally not patient enough. The battlecruiser is still limping away. And considering my ship is down for the count, I might want to have their ship down for the count as well. Because that means it's going to be expensive for them to fix it. Might be useful. As for the rest of these guys, they still are torpedo hazards. Especially the light cruiser and the DD. The heavy cruisers have sent half of their complement so far. Um, and Irene over here still has plenty more. Look at that. Irene does seem to have misplaced her 10-inch gun. And is... Well, she's continuing to float, but she's not exactly fighting. Her biggest gun right now is a 3-incher. Let's end the battle here before the damage increases. And I do get 6,000 victory points versus 611. But the bad news is I completely misplayed this. This means my battleship is going to be down for... 4 months is what my expectation is here. And with 4 months out of... Uh, Another one of the battleships. That means that if I happen to encounter one of their high-end battleships, I have a hefty challenge on my hands. It does look like Germany has some trouble trying to keep all of their transports alive. Go figure. In the region Caribbean, they're losing transports. In eastern South America, they're losing transports. They're losing in western South America. And they're losing in the South Pacific. I am also losing some ships, but in the Central Atlantic. Which makes sense, considering that I really don't have a whole lot of ships there at all. Um, oh, they're invading northern France. Good luck with that. What's the situation with their army logistics? 100%. And the French? 36. Ooh, that could be a problem. They're walking in with twice the firepower as well. This is <laughs> going to be a problem for the French. Um, and by the extent of that, for me. Because if they're able to conquer the French, I'm going to have issues as well. Now, what am I trying to conquer here again? And Northern Marianas. Okay, let's go grab that. Naval Invasion, Northern Marianas. Oscar Mike. So, what other convoys do need protecting? We have the Enigma Hun versus a couple of heavy cruisers. It's another Irene from 1938. Oh, it's a Torp Spammer. Fine. We'll give the other, the 18-inch guns another uh, shot. Pardon the pun. The starting distances are getting a little nuts. With 50 kilometers before we're able to try and... Uh, well, knife fight, that is. Before you're able to actually get some shots off, you're looking at 30 kilometer range most of the time. The 18s have 38 kilometer range. These guys have 33. That's their range on paper, right? 
the chances of actually hitting at 33 kilometers is relatively low. Now, I also have the Obelisk Patowski over here. Proud cruiser, 9-inch guns, 24 kilometers, and torpedoes out to 13.1. They're only the tier 4 torps. I still have to upgrade those to the tier 5s. That is the 18-inch gun doing some chatting. I'm not exactly sure what you happen to be scouting for the Enigma Hunt for, because we can definitely see the targets. What's the torpedo range on these boys? 13.9. Okay. I don't mind dancing around them with the Obelix if I have to. But the real thing is, I don't have to. So let's just follow the Enigma Hun. And let her do what she does best, which is put 13-inch guns on targets. Yeah, I think this is the newer Irene. This is quad, quad, quintuple. Same here. But they're not even trying to fire yet. But soon they will. 13 kilometers out. The problem that I have against these German ships is that the Germans tend to be a lot faster. Surf has a lightning rod. And... I simply cannot take these guys out before they become a threat. Unless I continuously head away, but that tends to make me lose all of my accuracy, waste all of my shells needlessly, and still lose the battle. So that's bad news for me. Torps away. My torpedo launcher also got promptly destroyed. Once again, the 18-inch gun here is... Well, well, actually, the 18 did a bit more. Surprising. My torps might... Might land. Yeah, boom. Okay. They have torpedoed the heavy cruiser. Let's have you turn. The ship is flooding. Three compartments on the bow. She's still doing 30 knots. Armor-wise, these things were pretty okay. 155% armor quality, 8.2-inch main belt. So, that should be something that these shells, at least the APs, can pen. Oh, crap, we ran out of HEs. Okay, fine. So be it. Um, are you launching yet? Yeah, you was, you've also been launching. Fun. Okay, when? Your reload is 1400 seconds, so the chance that they're kind of going like here is very high. Target this. And try to shoot off those torpedo launchers if you can get lucky. We're, fa we're, we're fighting with armor piercing though, so the chance of going with an actual pen, I think, is greater than to go with an HE pen on their, uh, their torpedo launcher. Although we're just getting ricochets right now. Come on. Come on. Nope. It's not enough. Well, at least we knocked out the conning tower. Which they got 0.6 inches of armor on. It's very optimistic or very stupid. Are you actually not... What the hell? Oh no, you ate the torpedoes that were meant for the cruiser. Fuck. Okay, so I got an Enigma Hunt badly, badly flooded. Potentially unable to fire. Not because it was heading away, but because it is angled so much. Like, listing. Is this thing even trying to fight? Yes, it is. Okay, so it's a valid target. Damage to the main tower. Obelix is suddenly going to have to do a lot more work trying to deal with this ship. Because I was not expecting my main battleship to get, well, not taken out, but at least crippled through this fight. Nice and broadside target. Punch it. Yeah, some pen. You can probably pen me all the same. Well, not as much. Flooding. 500 million for a cruiser. Mine are still cheaper, but not by much. 
More flooding. Yeah, the Enigma Hunt's unable to fire. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? I think Obelix might have it. This thing is flooding a lot now. And with that damage, she too is going to have the issue of listing. More flooding. Oh, damn it. Torpedoes. That was the Saxon that launched the side spread. The side torpedo launcher. Yeah, Oblix is definitely carrying the battle here. 8,500 damage done versus 1,300. Definitely carrying it. Come on. Get rid of that cruiser. Because you two are not doing that well. Ship's not flooded, but the armor is something that concerns me. Come on. Where's that going? It cannot be targeting an Enigma. Huh? The ship's too far away. Oh, they're pumping it right back out. Come on. Keep at it. Flooding? And now we're going to ricochet a lot. <laughs> Damage to a torpedo. Ricochet. Still got some HE left, but not much. Fine. Use it. Flooding. Oh, crap. They just send a whole spread into my direction. Now we're getting some damage in. Cats are getting awful chatty around here. Sorry if that's getting recorded. Flooding. 6%. Oh, come on. They just sent another spread. I'm just out of range of the Saxon. Come on. Keep at it. You can get this guy. It's going to have to be with armor piercing, though. Just run out of HE. Crew loss? 32%. Crew loss is severe. 7%. Come on, how much of this ship is still above water? Oh, that's another torpedo launch. Nice. There it is. That's an early torpedo launch. That's not the one they just sent. Good lord, we're not exactly getting through. We keep flooding the stern compartments because that's all that we can shoot at. In the meanwhile, I've been reduced to 30%. I'm going to try and just disengage. Let's end the battle here. I feel like I've done some damage, but at a cost which should have been far, far, far less than what I actually did. So overall, I'd say the war against the Germans is going okay. But they're definitely proving to be a lot more resilient than, well, pretty much all the other major powers I've pushed over so far. I feel that my main objective should be to survive in the Caribbean. And ideally, of course, start taking territory here and completely kick the Germans out so I won't lose any transports in the Caribbean. But it's not something that I can do easily. So for now, my main plan is to just keep pushing here and here with this, let's say, this small invasion force while I build up additional warships. But that's going to take a lot of time, like three years. Thankfully, the campaign can run to 1960, so we have time. Hope you guys will join me for the next one. Thank you for watching this one. I'll see you soon for more.